Assassination of Kim Jong-nam, Wikipedia article audio The assassination of Kim Jong-nam occurred on February 13, 2017 when two women attacked him with VX nerve agent, a lethal chemical weapon, at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia. Kim was the eldest son of deceased North Korean leader Kim Jong-il and the half-brother of current North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The assassination is under investigation but is widely believed to have been ordered by the North Korean government. Kim arrived in Malaysia on February 6, 2017, traveling to the resort island of Langkawi on February 8. On February 9 he met with an unidentified American national, reported by the Asahi Shimbun to be an intelligence officer. On February 13, 2017 at about 9 a.m., Kim was attacked by two women with VX nerve agent near an airport self-check-in kiosk at Level 3, Departure Hall in KLIA 2 the low-cost carrier terminal at Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Malaysia during his return trip to Macau. VX is a chemical weapon banned by the Chemical Weapons Convention of 1993. North Korea, which has not ratified the convention, is suspected of holding a stockpile. Attack at the airport International Reactions Malaysian police said that Kim had alerted an airport receptionist, saying someone had grabbed him from behind and splashed a liquid on his face and that a woman covered his face with a cloth laced with a liquid. Kim was treated at the hospital in the Manaram Medical Clinic by nurse Rubia Tool Adai Ahmad Sofi and Dr. Nick Maud Adzrul Arif Raja Aslan, who later testified that he was sweaty, in pain and unresponsive. At the clinic, Kim was given 1 mg of atropine, and also adrenaline. Kim required tracheal intubation, and the saliva, vomit and blood in his mouth needed to be suctioned out. A resuscitation device was strapped to Kim's face, and he was then transported by stretcher through the authorized personnel-only area of the airport to reach an ambulance. Kim died while being transferred from the airport to the Putrajaya Hospital. As he was traveling under the pseudonym Kim Cole, Malaysian officials did not immediately formally confirm that Kim Jong-nam was the man killed. Kim's extensive Facebook usage under this pseudonym since at least 2010, and usage of commercial email services for communications, may have made it easier for North Korean agents to seek his whereabouts and track his movements. At the time of his death, Kim's backpack contained approximately $100,000 in cash, and he was carrying four North Korean passports, all bearing the name Kim Cole. On February 14, Malaysian police arrested a 28-year-old Vietnamese woman named On Th. Huang at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in connection with the attack. Huang was identified through CCTV footage. On February 16, a 25-year-old Indonesian woman named Siti Aisha was arrested and identified as the second female suspect. Aisha's boyfriend, a 26-year-old Malaysian named Muhammad Farid bin Jalaluddin, was also arrested on February 16 to assist in the investigation. Huang told the police that she was instructed by four men who were traveling with them to spray Kim with an unidentified liquid while Aisha held and covered his face with a handkerchief as part of a prank. She claimed that after she returned to look for the others, they had disappeared, and thus she decided to head back to the airport the next day. South Korea On February 17, police arrested a 46-year-old North Korean man named R.I. Jong Cole. He was described as an IT worker for Tombo Enterprise, living in Malaysia. Kim Myung Yeon, 
a spokesperson for South Korea's ruling party, described the killing as a naked example of Kim Jong-un's reign of terror. United States The South Korean government accused the North Korean government of being the responsible party for conducting Kim Jong-nam's assassination, and drew a parallel with the execution of Kim Jong-un's own uncle and others. The government later held an emergency Security Council meeting in which they condemned the murder of Kim Jong-nam. The acting president of South Korea, Wang Kyo Ahn, said that if the murder of Kim Jong-nam was confirmed to be masterminded by North Korea, that would clearly depict the brutality and inhumanity of the Kim Jong-un regime. North Korea was relisted as a state sponsor of terrorism by the United States of America on November 20, with the assassination cited as one of the reasons. Autopsy In March 2018, the United States Department of State imposed additional sanctions on North Korea, having asserted that North Korea used VX nerve gas to assassinate Kim Jong-nam. Diplomatic Protest An autopsy was conducted despite North Korean diplomats objecting to any such procedure on Kim's body. Malaysian officials later commented that the autopsy proceeded as the North Korean diplomats failed to submit a formal protest. A post-mortem on Kim was conducted on February 15 at the Kuala Lumpur Hospital Mortuary in the presence of several North Korean officials, and concluded the following day, formally confirming the identity of Kim's body. The autopsy was conducted by pathologist Mohammad Shah Mahmood of Kuala Lumpur Hospital, who testified that Kim's lungs, brain, liver, and spleen were affected by the poison. Chemical pathologist Nur Ashikin Othman testified that Kim's urine showed the effects of being exposed to the poison. Low levels of cholinesterase indicated that Jong Nam had been exposed to an insecticide or nerve agent. Forensic consultant Dr. Nur Liza Bte Abdullah testified that Jong Nam's pupil constriction, and the feces in his underwear, suggested he had been poisoned. North Korean-Malaysian Dispute On February 24, Malaysia's police chief Khalid Abu Baker announced that a post-mortem toxicology report had found traces of the nerve agent VX on Kim's face. According to experts, the use of VX gas may explain why two assailants were involved, because each assailant could have wiped two or more precursors in Kim's face. This is referred to as a binary chemical weapon. This method could ensure that the assailants were not themselves killed by the poison, which can be fatal in very small amounts. Additionally, smuggling the chemical components into Malaysia separately could have helped avoid detection. Aishia reported she vomited in the taxi afterward and has continued to feel unwell. Chemical weapons experts Jean Pascal Zanders and Richard Guthrie noted that the reported effects were not entirely consistent with the potency of VX. Jong Nam was able to walk to the medical station without suffering spasms, paramedics were not affected, the assailants survived, and there were no other reports of injury even though the scene of the attack was not cleaned for over a week. VX degrades rapidly in storage and North Korea's supplies are believed to be several years old, which could explain the apparent weakness of the chemical. Further Investigations On March 10, police completed the autopsy, confirming that the body belonged to Kim Jong-nam based on DNA provided by his son Kim Han-sol, and the body was handed to the Ministry of Health for further action. The health ministry said they would then give Kim's family two to three weeks to claim his body, with the body having been embalmed to preserve it during the period. The family, however, declined to take the body and gave the Malaysian authorities permission to manage the remains. Over objections of Kim Han-sol, 
the body was flown to Pyongyang on March 31. Kim's blazer, backpack and watch were initially submitted to a police chemistry department for analysis, but subsequently returned to officials from the North Korean embassy. Following Malaysia's refusal to release the body immediately, North Korea's ambassador Kong Kol accused Malaysia of collaborating with the country's enemies over the assassination of Kim Jong-nam. The ambassador said they would reject the outcome of the post-mortem conducted on its citizen without permission and perceived the decision as a violation of human rights, and thus would lodge a complaint to the International Court of Justice. The ambassador was summoned by the government of Malaysia on February 20, while the Malaysian ambassador to North Korea was recalled. The ambassador then responded that they cannot trust the investigation by Malaysian police, noting there had been no evidence of the cause of death even a week after the attack. He also proposed that North Korea and Malaysia should open a joint investigation together in order to prevent influence from South Korea which, he said, is trying to malign North Korea as the party responsible for the killing. Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak responded to the ambassador that his country will be objective in the investigation and assured the North Korean side that they do not have reason to paint North Korea in a bad light while rejecting the request for joint investigation. On February 22, Malaysian police said there was evidence of an attempted break-in at the mortuary where Kim's body was being held. The North Korean government rejected all findings, accused the Malaysian police of fabricating evidence in collusion with South Korea and demanded the release of the three people being held in connection with the death. On February 28, the North Korean government dispatched a high-level delegation to Malaysia. North Korea said the claim that VX nerve agent was used to kill one of its citizens is absurd and lacks scientific basis, portraying it as an allegation jointly made by the United States and South Korea to tarnish its image, adding that the death was caused by a heart attack as Kim Jong-nam has a record of heart disease. The North Koreans stressed that if it was indeed caused by the chemical it should be proven by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Malaysian police immediately rejected the North Korean claims. However, in a statement released by the Malaysian Foreign Ministry, the country said it was already co-operating with OPCW. Trial Malaysia announced that from March 6 they will cancel visa-free entry for North Koreans, citing security issues. On March 4, the North Korean ambassador Kong Kol was declared persona non grata and asked to leave within 48 hours, with a similar move having been imposed by North Korea towards the Malaysian ambassador. The North Korean authorities also reacted on March 7 by barring all Malaysian citizens in North Korea from leaving. Malaysian authorities imposed reciprocal measures, prohibiting North Korean citizens from leaving Malaysia. Notes On March 30, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak said that all Malaysians in North Korea as well as North Koreans in Malaysia would be allowed to return to their home countries after the receipt of a letter from Kim's family requesting his remains be returned to North Korea. According to lead police investigator Wan Azirul Nizam Che Wan Aziz, Kim Jong-nam told a driver in 2016 that he feared his life was in danger. One of the suspects, Sidi Aisha, had been in Malaysia at least a day before the attack, reportedly to celebrate her birthday with her friends. Aisha was a divorced mother who worked as a spa masseuse in Kuala Lumpur. She regularly returned to Indonesia to meet her mother and son. She told her mother that she found a better job as an actress in prank video for the Chinese market. After Huang and Aisha were arrested, they claimed they thought they were participating in a prank. 
According to both suspects, they were told to spray people in the vicinity with baby oil, one target being Kim Jong Nam. The pair were promised 100 US dollars, but, losing contact with their handlers, they never received the money. According to their lawyers, Huang was recruited in December 2016 in Hanoi, Vietnam, while Aisha was recruited in January 2017 by a Malaysian scout working for the North Koreans. The women were handled by separate teams of North Korean men, who posed as being from Japan and China, one of the recruiters being RIGU. Since their recruitment, Aisha had performed the prank on at least 10 occasions. She was flown to Phnom Penh to perform the prank three times with an offer of 200 US dollars, while Huang performed it four times in locations including the airport terminals and Mandarin Oriental Hotel in Kuala Lumpur. The Malaysian police retrieved a photo of James from City Aisha's phone. He was later identified as RIGU. The police searched for him but he was already in the North Korean embassy. On February 19, Malaysian police named four more North Korean suspects. They were identified as Riji Hyun, Hong Song Hac, Oh Jong Gil, and Rij Nam, all of whom left Malaysia after the attack, and the Malaysian police requested help from Interpol and other relevant authorities in tracking them. According to an unnamed source, the four suspects flew to Jakarta, Dubai, and Vladivostok before reaching Pyongyang. Three other male North Korean suspects were still in Malaysia, RIGU, who had lived in Malaysia for three years, Kim Ukil, an employee in Air Koryo, Hyun Kwang Song, the second secretary at the North Korean embassy. These suspects had taken refuge in the North Korean embassy. On February 22, Malaysian Police Inspector General Khalid Abu Baker said that the killing was a planned effort and that the two women arrested had been trained to carry out the attack and had repeatedly rehearsed it together at Pavilion Kuala Lumpur and Kuala Lumpur City Centre. Khalid also alleged that the women apparently knew they were handling poisonous substances. That same day, an unnamed Malaysian man believed to be a chemist was picked up by police during a raid on a condominium where he then led police to another condominium where various chemicals were seized. On February 28, both women were charged with murder, which carries a mandatory death sentence. A lawyer for Huang requested a second autopsy as he doubted Malaysian expertise, calling for experts from Japan and Iraq as well pathologists from North Korea itself to be involved. The Malaysian police responded by telling the lawyer to appeal to the High Court. On March 3, the only detained North Korean suspect, R.I. Jong Kol, was released and deported due to lack of evidence. While in transit through China, he told the media that the Malaysian police threatened to hurt his family if he did not confess his involvement in the murder and said his arrest was part of a conspiracy. Malaysian police strongly denied his allegation. On March 16, Interpol issued a red notice for the four North Korean suspects who had fled to Pyongyang. The three North Korean suspects, RIGU, Kim Ukil, and Hyun Kwang Song, who were holed up in the North Korean embassy in Malaysia, were released on March 30 and allowed to return home after investigators interviewed them and cleared them of any wrongdoing. On March 22, Yonhap News Agency released an information stating that Riji Hyun, one of the four suspects whom left Malaysia after the attack, is the son of former North Korean ambassador to Vietnam R.I. Hong. From November 2009, he worked as a trainee diplomat in Hanoi for more than a year before becoming an interpreter for another few years.
with his ability to converse fluently in Vietnamese language, he is suspected of having seduced and lured the Vietnamese national Huang into a fake TV prank, making her believe that he is a rich South Korean man. On the request of the judicial authorities of Malaysia, Interpol had published a red notice for Ri Ji Hyun for his involvement in the murder plot. According to the forensics investigation, Kim had a Dell laptop which had accessed data stored on a USB pen drive while he was in Langkawi, though the pen drive was not in his possession when he died. The murder trial of Siti Aisha and Don Th. Huang began on October 2, 2017 at the High Court in Shah Alam, Selangor, Malaysia with both pleading not guilty. Judge Datuk Azmi Arifin is presiding. A Malaysian chemist, Raja Subramaniam, testified before the court that traces of the VX nerve agent thought to be used in the assassination were found on the two women, such as on Huang's white jumper, Huang fingernails and on Aishya's sleeveless t-shirt. The testimony was the first evidence to provide a link between the defendants and the VX nerve agent. A pathologist Mohammed Shah Mahmood told the court that VX was the sole cause of death. According to Mohammed, based on a post-mortem report, toxicology tests found traces of six types of drugs in Kim's body that are used to treat diabetes, hypertension, and gout while the autopsy found no sign Kim had a heart attack as been alleged by North Korean authorities before. The pathologist explained that those drugs and its conditions would not have caused Kim's swift death and testimony showed Kim died within two hours of being attacked, not within 20 minutes as earlier stated by Malaysia's health ministry, also stating the fastest absorption of VX would have been through the eye mucus. Under cross-examination by both defense lawyers, Mohammed however acknowledged he had limited knowledge on the nerve agents in general and said he didn't know the amount of the poison that was used. Another chemical pathologist, Nur Ashikin Othman, told the court that tests on Kim's blood showed a very low level of 344 units per liter of cholinesterase enzyme and said it could be caused by poison such as pesticide or nerve agent with blood tests on both defendants only found normal enzyme levels, although this does not conclusively show they were not exposed to VX as the women may have been in contact with the nerve agent at a low concentration or may have decontaminated themselves by washing their hands with soap or taken an antidote. Tenku Ampu in Rahima Hospital Dr. Ranjani Sivaganabalan, a specialist in poisons, testified that VX may not be fatal in very low dosages and disagreed with an assertion that as little as 10 mg of VX would be lethal to humans while claiming that a person with VX on their hands may not be fully decontaminated by washing it off with soap and water. Toxicologist K. Sharmila testified that vials of atropine, a drug used as an antidote to poisoning with nerve agents such as VX, were found in Kim Jong-nam's bag. On October 8, the trial had to be moved to a high-security laboratory due to danger posed by the nerve agent tainted clothing admitted into evidence. Sepang-KLIA District Senior Investigating Officer ASP Wan Azirul Nizam Che Wan Aziz identified four suspects in the CCTV as Mr. Chong, Mr. Y, James, and Hannah Mori. The men were not arrested because Malaysian police did not have sufficient information to identify or locate the suspects. According to investigating officer Wan Azirul Nizam Che Wan Aziz and deputy public prosecutor Wan Shaharad and Wan Ladin. When the trial resumed in January 2018, Justice Azmi Arifin ruled that certain CCTV records could not be admitted as evidence. On March 14, Huang lawyer His Yam Te Po Tiak presented a recorded statement from Noi. And by Th. Y. 
a bar owner and Huang's friend to the Vietnamese police on March 1, 2017, detailing how Huang was recruited by a man named as Lee. Through the statement, Th. Y said. Me and Huang used to work together as waitresses at the 17 bar in Hanoi from 2014 to May 2016. On December 27, 2016, Lee came to the Hay Bar in Hanoi that was run by me and my husband. Lee claimed he had a Korean father and Vietnamese mother and that he was married but divorced with no children. He offered me a job as an actress but I refused because I need to take care of my young son. Lee then asked me to introduce him to one of her friends. I remembered Huang loved acting and contacted her. When Huang came by the bar to meet Lee, I heard him telling Huang that his team was making prank videos at the airport and she was required to dress nicely pass by another person and pour a cup of liquid on his slash her head. During the cross-examination, the defense lawyer also produced an affidavit th. Y had made last October that also contained her police statement. The Malaysian police lead investigator Wan Azirul Nizam Che Wan Aziz then came under fire from the lawyer after he admitted not seeking out th. Why even though the accused had mentioned her in her statement, with the lawyer said in doing an investigation you are supposed to look for the truth, but your investigation is only focused on the CCTV footage. Their truth is there but no one in Malaysia is interested. The lawyer also told that in November he had asked the Malaysian Attorney General's office for assistance in convincing Th. Why to travel to Malaysia to testify about her role in introducing Huang to the North Korean man. The request was however declined with another attorney representing Huang, Salim Bashir said it's unfortunate that the Attorney General declined to exercise his power to do this and in doing that deprived us of having the opportunity for police to go to Vietnam and investigate. According to the lawyer, Th. Why also turned down efforts by Vietnamese police and defense lawyers to travel to Malaysia to testify for Huang, citing her responsibility in running her bar with her husband and taking care of her young child. Meanwhile on the city Aisha side according to her lawyer Guisun Singh, he slammed Malaysian investigators for not allowing him to meet Aisha during her 14-day remand and not releasing portions of the video linked to the attack as well for the authorities' failure to copy all the footage from the CCTV server of the airport which compromised the defense of Aisha. The lawyer blamed the police for not publishing the entire incident of the video during the attack as it was seen during the trials that police had deliberately cut off the key moments of the killing from the video that the accused was adjusting glasses after attacking the victim. The lawyer adding that police has failed to investigate crucial evidence such as Aisha's jeans and glasses that were not sent for lab tests. Based on a chemistry department test also showing that Aisha's finger nail cuttings, nail swabs and blood found no traces of VX.